Real Madrid's unsung hero Federico Valverde bought for just 5 million euros in 2017 to playing the most numbers of games for Los Blancos out of the whole squad in the 23-24 season, he's gone under the radar as one of Madrid's biggest reasons for their success in recent years. Now, the name Valverde evokes images of lung-busting runs, strong tackles and thunderous shots from a distance. So, who do these traits remind you of? Well, in 2022, one of the best strikers in the history of football, Luis Suarez, said, There are newspaper archives back in 2017 when Fede made his debut in the national team. I already said that he reminded me of Steven Gerrard, who was a teammate of mine at Liverpool. And this comparison is hardly recent. It started when Valverde was in Penarol. Real Madrid scouts were reportedly left awestruck watching Federico Valverde on the pitch during his time at Penarol. And they drew comparisons between his style of play and that of Liverpool legend Steven Gerrard. When Ancelotti, Valverde's coach, was asked about his view on the comparison, he said, I agree. He has a lot of the same talents as Gerrard, he told reporters. It's very good that they're comparing him with a player who has had this success. I think Federico has everything he needs to reach Gerrard's level and go even further. Valverde, of course, admires this comparison. It's spectacular when you're compared to such a player, to a star, to a world idol, he said. Fede Valverde, born July 22, 1998, is a Uruguayan professional footballer who plays as a midfielder for Real Madrid and the Uruguayan national team. He's famous for his work rate, stamina and shooting ability. He's mainly a central midfielder, but is also able to play as a defensive midfielder, a right winger and occasionally a right back. Like many South American players, the Uruguayan came from a humble background. She worked from 8am to 7pm and my dad worked from 8pm to 6am. So you can do the math. We had one golden hour to sit together and eat our little piece of meat for the three of us. And what's incredible to me now, thinking back on everything, is that my mum always made sure that I had my Coke. Man, I was a little brat about my soda. In Spain or in America, it will seem like nothing to most people. It's just Coke. It's almost free. But for me, it was more like champagne. Because of their financial status, Valverde was a very quiet kid. He was scared that having many friends would lead to friends coming to visit him and learning about their situation. This led him to find solace in football. Valverde started football by playing in the street before joining his local neighbourhood club Estudiantes de la Union. At Penarol, he became a professional footballer. Valverde spent most of his youth career with Peñarol, where he made significant progress and impressed fans. He made his club debut on July the 23rd, one day after his 17th birthday, in a friendly against Cruzeiro, where they won 3-1. He then made his senior debut for the club on August 16th, 2015, in their first fixture of the 2015-16 season against Cerro, during which he was managed and mentored by his childhood idol and teammate Diego Forlan. Valverde became famous at Peñarol and became the talk of the town. Describing this era, he said in an interview, When I turned professional at 16, I thought that I was a god. I don't think people understand how crazy it is to go from being a nobody walking down the street in your city and all of a sudden you have grown men wanting a selfie with you. You're getting DMs from girls who wouldn't even look at you last week. Everybody wants to be your friend. After a successful spell at Peñarol, he became part of the Uruguayan national youth teams and attracted the interest of European clubs, including Arsenal, Barca, Chelsea and Real Madrid. Then in July of 2016, Valverde was transferred from Peñarol to Real Madrid and was assigned to their reserve team, Castilla. The signing came as a bit of a shock to Valverde. According to him, he was happy in Paraguay playing in the under-17 competition when his mum asked him to come to the room where some people from Madrid wanted to speak with him. They told him, We're from Real Madrid. We believe that you can become a star for us. We want you and your parents to move over to Madrid. And that was it. He soon established himself as a regular player in Castilla in his first season and became an important part of the squad. I'm very happy with him. He has adapted very well to the club and the country. Valverde always generates a lot of football in midfield, his then-coach Santiago Solari said. After a successful spell at Castilla, he was loaned to Deportiva La Coruña in order to have a taste 
of high-quality football while having some playing time. After a season-long loan, he returned to Madrid. Valverde became a key member of the Madrid team under the tutelage of Zinedine Zidane in the 2019-20 season and has been an integral member of the Spanish giant squad since then. He's played a total of 258 matches for Madrid, scoring 21 times and providing 23 assists while lifting 13 major trophies. Fede has played more games than anyone for Madrid this season and even recorded the second most amount of assists for the team on their way to the La Liga title this season. This is how Real Madrid keep on dominating football. Of course, they sign the big players like Jude Bellingham, Kylian Mbappe, but they also scout the hidden gems like Valverde, one of football's greatest bargains in recent times. We got a lot of stick on this channel for not mentioning Valverde enough in our video on Real Madrid a few weeks ago, so we wanted to make this video to give him the respect he fully deserves. He has been an unsung cornerstone of Madrid's success in the last few years, and he will continue to be in the years to come. Valverde has played many matches for Madrid while scoring many world-class long-range goals, but his most memorable moment was the 115th minute last man tackle on Alvaro Morata under Sergio Ramos's guidance against Atletico Madrid in January of 2020. Valverde has many attributes comparable to those of Steven Gerrard, with his footballing IQ being particularly notable. It was evident in their Supercopa de España final against Atletico in January of 2020, with the game tied at 0-0. Valverde took on and won the challenge against Morata in the 115th minute and Madrid later went on to win the title on penalties thanks to this decisive tackle. Like Gerard, Valverde is a tenacious tackler, not afraid to put a foot in to win the ball back and this allows him to disrupt the opposition's rhythm and launch those crucial counter-attacks. Also, like Gerard, Valverde is known for his ability to influence the game across the entire pitch. He can win the ball back deep in his own half, orchestrate attacks from midfield and even contribute in the final third with goals and assists. Valverde is an extremely versatile player. He's been deployed all across the midfield and also as a right winger and a right back as mentioned. He has an unbelievable work rate, covering incredible distances across the pitch. All of these attributes truly justifying his comparisons to that Liverpool icon Steven Gerrard, and all of this at 25 years of age. Valverde, of course, now has the opportunity to surpass the Englishman as well, as stated by Ancelotti. Scarily, just think how well of a season Madrid have had, and this is before they sign the best player in the world. When Mbappe is added to the class of players Madrid have, we can safely predict that the dominance will likely not be ending any time soon. This is, of course, taking into account the fact that the majority of these players are youngsters who are capable of playing for Madrid for the next 10 years. We can't help but wonder how many trophies they will receive in that decade. They may need a bigger trophy cabinet. The squad they have is immense. Chuamani, Camavinga, Rodrigo, Rudiger, Mbappe, Bellingham, Vinny Jr. I mean, not bad, eh? And we think here that Valverde is a crucial part of the squad. So how dominant do you envision Real Madrid becoming in the next five to ten years?